you're wondering how um, you could perhaps prevent um, another affair or reconnecting with a previous affair partner or whatever, how can you how can you keep it from happening again, right? If you're asking yourself that question, um, let's take a few minutes together and unpack some strategies that may be helpful to uh, help you feel a little more safe and confident moving forward in your marriage that maybe it won't happen again. So stay tuned. So in full transparency, let's just put the cards on the table. Um, we don't have control over whether it happens again. We can't control someone, someone else's actions, right? We can't force our spouse to stay faithful. They're, they're their own person and they're going to do what they're going to do. But, 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 but before you stop watching this video, there are some important steps we can take as a spouse and within the marriage to ensure that faithfulness will um, happen and supersede any kind of unfaithfulness. Okay, so um, here are some things that I would recommend if you're looking for ways to protect your marriage. First and foremost, your marriage needs boundaries. Your marriage needs boundaries. And what I mean by that, um, I've talked a lot about individual boundaries, right? I've talked about how it's important for us to have boundaries, our spouse to have boundaries. Um, your relationship needs boundaries. Your marriage needs boundaries. Um, so let's take an example of um, uh, how each of us, uh, husband, wife, how we communicate with people of the opposite gender at work. Uh, talk about it. This is and now any any boundary around your marriage has to be decided upon by both parties, by you and your spouse. You and your spouse both need to decide this is a healthy boundary around our marriage and we are both going to be committed to honoring and protecting this boundary. So uh, is it okay to have um, a friend at work that's of the opposite gender that you text late at night, send funny memes to, talk about your marriage to? I mean, is that something the two of you agree upon? If the answer is no, that's inappropriate, that's not okay. Okay, a boundary around your marriage could look like this. Um, we will not have friends of the opposite gender beyond acquaintance friends, meaning um, if you've got coworkers of the opposite gender and you can say, hey, how you doing? I, you know, oh, hey, I hear your kids going off to school. Good luck with that. You know, surface level conversation is okay. But anything intimate, anything about our marriage, anything about our feelings, um, anything like that, we're not going to do. And we will not text that person after work hours. Like we will not have a personal texting relationship unless it's work related. You know what I mean? You set a boundary around that. Boundaries around our marriage aren't that's important. Another boundary around our marriage could be when it comes to in-laws. Okay. Um, we will set a boundary that says, you know, our, our priority is our family and our parents and our siblings outside of that immediate family are secondary, not primary. Now, of course, sometimes we have to adjust those, right? If you have an ailing parent or whatever, sometimes the ailing parent does need to take priority momentarily. However, again, we just need to realize that our relationship with our spouse and our immediate family and our children, that's the priority. Maybe our boundary needs to state that we prioritize that and that always comes first. That's our boundary. Do you see what I mean? I think your marriage needs boundaries. I think all of our marriages need boundaries. If your marriage has healthy boundaries and the two of you are committed to honoring them, we are less likely to dishonor our marriage through an affair. Okay. Have healthy boundaries around your relationship. Um, another recommendation I would have is communication. Uh, a lot of affairs happen because the spouse that has the affair doesn't feel safe communicating their feelings to their spouse. Maybe they're feeling lonely. Maybe they're feeling um, 
disconnected. Uh, maybe they're depressed and they just, they don't know how to communicate with their spouse or they don't feel safe communicating with their spouse. It is critical that spouses learn how to talk to each other. They have got to learn how to communicate better. Okay. If you have healthy communication in your marriage, you're much less likely to step outside of your marriage to get your needs met because you recognize pretty clearly that, um, you know, this is, this is, this is my safe space. My marriage is my safe space. And I, if I'm not feeling um, connected, if I'm feeling um, neglected, if I'm feeling lonely, if I'm sad, if I'm depressed, if I'm not feeling good about myself, I have low self-confidence, I feel safe going to my spouse and talking to them about it and figuring out, or, or I feel like I need to talk to a counselor and I can express my feelings there. That's okay to communicate in that setting as well. Communication is critical. Being able to talk about your feelings is critical. The better able a couple is to have that kind of open relationship and be transparent with one another about how they're feeling, what they're going through, and what they need, the less the chances that there's going to be an affair involved. So those are just two ways that I can express to you that maybe if you want to look at ways to prevent a, pre a next affair, those are things to work on. And if that's not working in your relationship right now, you don't, you don't have boundaries, you're not communicating well, get a great couples counselor. Go get help. Find somebody who can help you guys learn how to do these things and do it in a healthy way. Um, I think that's the way to do it. That's the way to prevent it happening again. Now, is that a 100% foolproof guarantee that your spouse is never going to betray you? I no. I don't think there that exists. I don't think there is this foolproof thing out there, but these are really good ways to do it. And these are healthy things that every relationship needs. So working towards that is going to be healthy no matter what. That would be my recommendation. So can you guarantee it's not going to happen? No, but, but you can take really great positive steps toward ensuring that you have a healthy marriage, which in itself, will be a great deterrent to any future affair activity. So if you're looking for a coach to help you do these things, you want to talk further and dig deeper into these things, I am a master certified coach. I'd love the opportunity to talk with you. Hey, grab the freebies below. I've got some great freebies that might be helpful to you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel in case you want to check out my next videos that come out and uh, schedule a free consultation with me if you're looking for someone to help you do these things. All right. So good luck. Step into those two strategies and see if that doesn't help you feel a little more confident and a little safer staying in your marriage.